Hello and welcome to this brief introduction on health behavior change interventions. In this video, I intend to show you what to consider when developing an intervention for health behavior. And I intend to introduce three main components that we see as very important when we want to design health behavior change interventions, for example, to change diet behavior of people or to change or increase physical activity or exercise. And the first component we are mostly very familiar with are the health behavior change theory. The second component we need to consider are strategies that make the behavior actually happen or behavior change techniques that make behavior happen. And third, I want to briefly discuss the form of delivery of these techniques or strategies. So this is mainly about how do I best deliver interventions or techniques to make sure there is actually an impact. And you can read uh, Dombrovsky's old paper that was published in 2016. It's a nice uh, editorial and it's a summary for uh, the things we discussed. It's quite a good overview. So let's start off first with the behavior change theory. So looking at theory when we uh, design health behavior change interventions is sort of very common practice for most people. What theories actually do, they put theoretical cons considerations and contract, uh, constructs together in one model. So, for example, um, the theory or the social cognitive theory has like psychological considerations such as self-efficacy. They uh, look at educational um, viewpoints in terms of modeling. And uh, they also introduce other relevant constructs that help us to sort of understand how behavior change should happen. So all, all these models do basically the same thing. They give us a very generic explanation of the behavior change process. So again, you're familiar probably with the social cognitive theory, theory of planned behavior, or the trans theoretical model of behavior change. And here's just sort of an example to um, make sure you understand what I mean by that. So this is a theory of planned behavior you might be familiar with. So what it basically says is that if you have a positive attitude towards the behavior, for example, physical activity, if others sort of encourage you and think it's great to do more physical activity, and if you have great behavior control or self-efficacy, this can impact your intention of doing physical activity, and this can also then lead to behavior or to physical activity. So it basically tells you in a very generic way how we think that a behavior can change with these three constructs leading to intention and then through behavior. The problem with these theories is that they basically exp only explain the behavior change process. And it doesn't really tell you how to influence the predictors or the, the, the constructs that lead to behavior change. For example, um, the theory of planned behavior we just looked at here, it tells you that perceived behavior control or self-efficacy is very important. But it doesn't tell you how can you actually change perceived behavior control or self-efficacy. So again, few techniques and strategies are included in behavior change theories that would help us to explain how do we change these predictors or behaviors in itself. Another problem when we only use behavior theory to design interventions is that although some theories say, okay, you need to use, for example, modeling in the theory, uh, in the social cognitive theory, but maybe these these techniques are not the most appropriate to use. And finally, research has repeatedly found that when I only use theory, theory in itself doesn't have a lot of impact on the behavior. So what we actually would need here 
are some very clear um, strategies or techniques that help us to explain or to, to impact behavior. So as a result, researchers develop certain behavior change techniques and strategies that we can use in interventions to change important predictors, such as self-efficacy. So we need certain techniques to make people change their self-efficacy so that they can then uh, achieve their behavior. So we always think of these behavior change techniques as active ingredients of behavior change. These are the things that really make behavior happen. And Miki and colleagues have developed three different taxonomies, starting from 2008 with 26 techniques, going to 2011, where they uh, have sort of come up with 40 techniques that are very specific for physical activity, diet, and the most recent one is a taxonomy with 93 techniques. So and for, uh, for you, if you want to consider physical activity and diet interventions, then um, I would always go to the calorie taxonomy, which has 40 behavior change techniques that you can use to actually impact behavior. So here's an example of how we can sort of put that into context. So we look here at an example of physical activity and exercise. So as we said before, Theory mostly explains you what kind of predictors lead to behavior. So from the theory, we know pretty well that self-efficacy leads to behavior. So for example, the more confident I am that I can be physically active, the more likely is it that I will actually be more physical activity, or will do more physical activity. So this is suggested by the theory of planned behavior or the social cognitive theory and a few others as well. But the big question is here, how do I impact self-efficacy and physical activity and exercise behavior? So I only know self-efficacy is important, but how do I impact self-efficacy? So to answer this question, Williams and French um, looked at the uh, BCT uh, taxonomy of the 40 um, techniques that I introduced earlier, and they looked at 27 physical activity and exercise interventions to check which of these 40 techniques are most effective to increase self-efficacy for physically, physical activity and physical activity and exercise. So here's what they found. They found Three techniques are very important to improve self-efficacy, to be active, and they're also important for behavior itself, for behavior change itself. So they found that when I give a person rewards for the effort to increase their physical activity, this has a great impact on self-efficacy. So for example, if I tell somebody, um, great that you try so hard to be more active, this has a great impact. The second behavior change techniques that I've found is very useful are action planning. So when people plan how, when, and where they will be active, this has a great impact on self-efficacy and also here on physical activity. And finally, they found that when I give per people sort of detailed instructions on what to do, so give them a plan on how to be active, like for example, an exercise program. This increases their self-efficacy, so they feel more confident of doing um, more exercise and activity, and it will also impact how much they actually do in terms of physical activity. So from theory, we know, as I said before, that self-efficacy has an impact on physical activity. And we now know also which behavior change techniques we could use to affect self-efficacy and also physical activity. So the final component we want to look at is the form of delivery. Because we need to be sort of thinking about the way we deliver these behavior change techniques and interventions. And the way we deliver these can have great impact in terms of how effective the techniques and the intervention is in terms of adherence to the interventions 
and in terms of how much people or how strongly people engage with an intervention. For example, is it better to t deliver a behavior change technique with uh, technology or is it maybe better to do it face to face? Now this can have great impact on how this actually works out. So here are a few uh, things you might want to consider when you think about how you deliver these behavior change techniques and interventions. So you can think of the format Do I want to um, uh, deliver the intervention with the technology? Do I want to do it face to face or do I want to have a mixture? So how often, how much and how frequent do I want to give an intervention? Yeah, that, as you might understand, this might have great uh, impact on how effective the intervention is or how much people are engaged. So when I just send maybe an SMS once in a month, are people very engaged with it or may, maybe not? We can also look at the provider. So should we say the intervention needs to be provided by a researcher or maybe a healthcare professional? Yeah, the healthcare professional might have a greater impact because sort of a therapist effect that people feel like um, that this person has great expertise. And we could also look at the style. Should the uh, uh, intervention be delivered very easy and simple, for example, just short text messages, or does it need to be very complex and complicated? Yeah, this is obviously related to things like educational level or literacy. And here in this final slide, I've put, tried to put this all together again with our example of physical activity and exercise. So as we said before, from the theory, we know self-efficacy should have an impact on physical activity. We also know that these three techniques are important to impact self-efficacy and also physical activity. Now the question is, how do we deliver these techniques and these interventions? So for example, we could say we could give people rewards for their effort via an SMS. We could do it three times a week and we could write very simple text messages so that people understand them and they don't feel scared about a very difficult language. The other two techniques, like action planning and instructions on how to exercise or move, could be delivered with an exercise booklet. Yeah, the format would be different than delivering the rewards for effort. And we could say, okay, how many action plans should we ask people to do in this booklet? And the behavior instructions could be very encouraging or they could also be very pushy or whatever you want it needs to be. So obviously this is not all really clear yet on what form of delivery is the best one. And there's a lot of research that goes still into this, but it's worth thinking about this because the way I deliver behavior change techniques and an intervention has definitely an impact on how effective the intervention is or how much people engage or adhere to the intervention. So in summary, the theory is sort of the starting point of any behavior change interventions, but it just explains really the process and it provides important predictors and constructs we need to consider when we develop the intervention. Secondly, behavior change techniques or strategies are important because these are actually the things that impact these predictors and the behaviors. And finally, we need to really think about how can these behavior change techniques and strategies be best delivered? Is it by an SMS? Is it face to face? Is it a mixture? How often do I want to give the intervention? Should it be very simple? Should it be a bit more complex? And so forth. So I hope this was uh, an overview that was useful to you and here are some uh, references if you would like to read up a little bit about it um, and this would conclude the video. Thank you.